Friday, September 17th, 2.47 p.m. Dad and Henry will be up to get me any minute. I printed out the scan of what I found. I'm sticking it on this page. It scares me. Friday, September 17th, 7.30 p.m. There's no two ways about it. Navigating stairs is complicated with a full leg cast and crutches. Our stairwell is narrow and there are family pictures hanging like clumps of grapes all the way down both sides. I think I would have been fine if I hadn't insisted I could do it alone. Henry and Dad were watching from the bottom of the stairs when I pitched forward somewhere near the middle and lost my balance. Dad met me with outstretched arms and my face smashed into his gray t-shirt. He smelled like a fisherman. My hands fanned over about a dozen family pictures and frames on the way down, but by some miracle of gravity, none of them fell to their deaths. They wobbled back and forth and knocked into one another, but they held. It looked like a big gust of wind had rushed through. In my defense, the cast is really heavy and, let's see, what's the word I'm searching for? Unbending. A cast like Big Bertha makes a person want to bend like never before. I'm dying to bend my leg. It's like a ferocious itch I can't scratch. Which reminds me, this thing itches like mad, so add that to my list of complaints. When I finally made it to the front porch, the floorboards creaked under the weight of my cast. I settled down on a gold tattered couch with my leg propped up on a wooden stool and breathed in the crisp fall air. Our porch is a lot like an outdoor living room. When a piece of furniture is replaced inside the house, the old item finds a home on the porch. After a while, a year, maybe two, the same item moves ten more feet and becomes an item in one of Mom's many yard sales. It's a natural progression, a slow but steady march off the property. I searched the skies for flying Dr. Pepper cans or other signs of Sarah, but there was nothing. Henry asked if I wanted to play three-handed cribbage. Not a great game if you ask me. I'm not sure who came up with it, but probably it was three people sitting in a room with one cribbage board and the person sitting out wanted to join in. I played anyway. It was nice to think about something other than haunted dredges and secret societies. How much longer? Henry asked after a little while. He was holding his cards with one hand and tugging slowly on one rainbow suspender with the other. Before what? Before you can walk around without something on your leg. How long, Dad? Seven weeks. Henry couldn't believe it. Seven weeks? You'll have to ship the cast to me. I'll leave a box. You're nuts. I bet it itches like termites. It does. You could jam a coat hanger down in there. Henry is a great card player. He has this maddening way of distracting everyone with all sorts of mindless small talk. He'll never admit it, but I'm sure this is part of his strategy. It's hard to concentrate when someone's talking about having an empty cast shipped to New York. I started thinking about what the box would look like. I wondered what his 12 girlfriends would say when they saw the cast propped up against the wall in his apartment. I started feeling almost positive there were bugs crawling around inside my cast. I begged my dad to go get me a coat hanger. And all the while, I made stupid plays all over the cribbage board. Eventually, I got my coat hanger straightened out and jammed it all the way down to my kneecap. That was an improvement. We basically sat there playing cards for about an hour, talking about nothing in particular. Mostly, Henry was trying to throw us off and was doing a hit-or-miss job. Eventually, Mom came home, and after calling hellos, we heard her pounding away on the pipes in the kitchen. You should go help her, Henry said. Henry has a lot of sympathy for my mom. He knows my dad isn't very good about taking on home projects. My dad is plenty capable, but he lacks motivation for certain kinds of tasks. You go help her, Dad said. What's she doing in there, Henry asked. Trying to unclog the garbage disposal, my dad said. She's under the sink, hitting the pipe with a rolling pin. Believe it or not, it usually works. Sounds a little like the old dredge when it was really cranking. My mom started yelling at the sink, which prompted my dad to set his cards down, sigh deeply, and walk indifferently to her rescue. There was something about that noise, the sound of banging on metal, that made me think again of the night I'd fallen and smashed my leg. There had been a clanging sound, barely audible, as if someone was hitting metal on metal. I decided to ask Henry about his comment. What sound do you mean? Henry leaned back in his chair until it was only on two legs. The dredge was incredibly loud. Tons of rocks were scooped from the ground and dumped inside. The conveyor belts were rimmed with thick planks of wood that kept everything from falling out. It was like a long water slide. You've seen those? But instead of water shooting through, it was boulders. It echoed like mad, which seemed to quadruple the rumbling. Such a horrible sound. A crew of four was required to run the dredge, and they were separated by quite a distance. One was stationed at the gears in front, where they watched everything come in. 
That person greased the machines and pulled the stop chain if things got jammed up. Another was at the far end watching the tailings dump out. There was a man at the control booth and one more we called a roamer, a guy who fixed things on the fly from a running list of problems. But the sound, the banging, what sound was that? Well, the workers couldn't hear one another. They couldn't yell that loud. So they used signals. They banged metal wrenches or hammers against the iron girders of the dredge to tell each other things. It was like Morse code, simple but effective in those days. When Dad returned, the conversation veered quickly away from the dredge. I didn't want him to hear us talking about it, and maybe Henry didn't either. Instead, we all played cards and talked about the Yankees and the Mariners. After a while, Mom brought the casserole with a crispy cheese top, and the last of the late summer bees started swarming around the porch.